Yeah, four overseas teams, two from Canada and two from Trinidad and Tobago competed at Saturday's Gibson McCook Relays in Kingston, Jamaica. But it was Flying Angels, a Toronto-based club that had tongues wagging. The Angels soared to two championship titles, winning the 4x200 for classes one and two boys. It was the first time they were competing at the meet since 2012. And this was their best ever performance, two gold medals. And we couldn't allow them to fly back to Canada without giving them a tour of our beautiful studio. I'm going to throw across to Lance Whitaker because he has the anchor leg runner on the 4x200 class two boys winning team. Sure, he had a grand time on Saturday and is probably still celebrating, Lance. Yeah, Jalil Haley, very, very impressive runner. Only 15 years old. How um, great was it for you over the weekend? Because usually the Jamaican schools dominate Gibson relays, but uh, you Canadians uh, gave them a lot to think about over the weekend. How was it for you? Um, for me, personally, it was a good experience, good exposure to go to Jamaica and run because usually when I travel for running, I only go like to the States and stuff like that. So for me, it felt good to be able to come Jamaica, to Jamaica and win the 4x2 Class 2 boys with my guys. My team. Yeah. Um, talk to us about your development as an athlete. You're still only 15 years old, but you're already 6 feet 2 inches tall. Uh, you may get as tall as Usain Bolt 6'5". Yeah. So... Um, when I was in grade four, I ran my first school track meet back in Canada. And after my races, I came first in the 200. And I did the hurdles, but I don't do hurdles anymore. Um, after I ran those races, I went to cities and won at cities in the 200. And my dad, he saw that he had a vision that I could be good in track. So he put me in a club. And ever since then, I've been training. And now I'm here. Your dad is Jamaican and actually ran for Jamaica College here, I'm told. Yeah. Your mom is also, also Jamaican, but you were yeah. born in Toronto, weren't you? Yeah. So my dad, um, back when he used to live in Jamaica, he ran for Jamaica College. Yes. His nickname was Dog. Dog? Yeah. <laughs> he said when he steps I on the track. I won't ask why, but go ahead, yeah. When, they step, when he steps on the track, they just start barking. <laughs> yeah. He told you that or you, you saw evidence of that? He told me that. Oh, he told you that. But you believe him, though? Yeah, for yeah. sure. All His right. friends tell me all the time. His friends tell you. All right. Um, how serious are you about track and field? Because at 15, 2207, you're a PB for 200 meters. You look to have a lot of quality. And as I said, you have the size and you look to have the desire. How far do you want to take this? Um, well, after high school, I want to go to university, try and get a D1 scholarship for track. And then the goal is to go pro. And yeah, try and who, who, who are your idols who are the athletes that that inspire you at the moment well my main three of course first Usain Bolt second is Andre de Grasse yes. and third is Noah Lyles well three big names there for sure yeah and uh, de Grasse being a Canadian is not is in your territory yeah. so you you can you can look closely at him for for inspiration uh, talk to us quickly about your training and how difficult is training? I know there are athletes who love training. Some athletes don't like training. Um, and sometimes coaches push you really hard. Mm -hmm. Is there, at 15 years old, for you, a, a love for training? Or is your, your big moment just competing in front of crowds? Well, me personally, training, I know it's going to make me better. So I thrive and I like training. Um, sometimes after school, because we have training after school for about like two to three hours. Sometimes the workouts it's hard, really hard, but you got to push through and just get through the workout to get better every day and yeah. keep doing what I'm doing. In the past year, you were voted Flying Angels High School Athlete of the Year, mm -hmm. but you had won a similar award before, didn't you? Could you talk to us about that? Um, I think it was 2021 20, yeah. that I had won the Athlete of the Year for elementary boys. For Which, and you were probably 11 years, 12 years old at the time? I think about, about 12, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I had won that award for elementary boys, and I had ran a couple of records that year for elementary in the 260, and yeah, 
think that's it. About Saturday, uh, it was very evident from the heats that the Flying Angels team would be a force to be reckoned with. Can you talk to us about your experience on Saturday and, and how things went from the heats? Because I thought, based on your performances in the heats, the fans really recognized that you know your, your team would have been a handful in the final later in the evening. So for me and my team, we came in knowing that we could win because we train, we made sure we're ready for everything that we go through. And we came into the race confident um, obviously, my first leg, Jordan, you know, he's a confident guy. He's always happy, always ready to run. Kerwin is my guy right there. He just moved to Canada a couple of days, a couple months ago, actually. And then Sean, you know, he always does his thing on the third leg. He's a killer right there. But, yeah, we came into the race, and as the race started, our handoffs were kind of shaky, but... Once I seen Nishan coming around the bend on the third leg, and he was winning it, once I got the baton, the only thing that was in my head was to get it to the line in first. Mm. So that's what I did. All right, well, Jalil, we'll be looking out for the name Jalil Haley because we see a lot of quality in, in your performances and your team overall. And we wish you the best of luck, Ricardo and Mariah, with their, your coach and some others from the Flying Angels who we're we are anxious to hear from. Take it away, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks very much to you, Lance. Um, yeah, we're pleased to be joined by head coach and founder Earl Letford and, of course, assistant head coach Justi Justice McInnes. Lady and gentlemen, how are you doing, first of all? Um, let me start with Coach Earl. How big a deal was it to come to Jamaica and win two relay events at Gibson McCook on Saturday? It was, it was a big deal. Um, these young people have been... A practicing for this, preparing for this, yeah. since uh, we mentioned it um, after we saw an episode that you aired. Yeah? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, hold on, on, hold yes. on there, coach. Hold on there, coach. Let's give the people a reminder of what happened, yeah? Yes. <laughs> well. That was 2012, wow. and Flying Angels, the leading track and field club in Canada, yes. certainly in the Toronto region, um, came to the Gibson McCook Relays. They have been to the Gibson McCook Relays on a few occasions. They haven't been in a while, but um, I know Coach Letford and Coach Justice over there in Canada. Yeah. We want to see you back at the Gibson McCook Relays, yeah. and uh, maybe you can hang on for the victory yeah. the next time you yeah. come. <laughs> so that was a challenge, Coach. <laughs> yes. Um... <laughs> Brother Chambers here threw out the gauntlet, so we had to make sure the young people were ready. Yeah. And um, I feel that they came ready. Even though we went through a few obstacles, um, they kept their mind um, straight, um, focused on what they had to do, and they, they came and they delivered. Yeah, and Coach Justice, you almost didn't get here. I, I know Coach Letford got in early. He's a smart man. Yeah. Um, but the rest <laughs> of the team coming in a day after him, and you almost didn't make it. Talk to us about that. Yeah, that was very challenging for us. We had, um, we were supposed to leave it on Thursday, yeah. got to the airport. First, the flight was, was uh, delayed, yeah. and then it was canceled. Ooh. We got back on, on Friday, Friday. Yeah. and then it was also delayed again. Ooh. So we didn't get in until after 11 o'clock, got to the hotel after 1, and... Um, the athletes were, went, was on, what, probably four hours sleep. Yeah. yeah, that must be tough. It was. Yeah. It was, but we just had to keep them composed and let them understand that we still have a job to get done. Yeah, and you definitely did. And, Coach, you know, this question goes to you because seeing that you had that hurdle to cross and then your athletes got here, does this go down as one of the best Gibson McCook relays or do you have another special one? This one was the best because of the obstacles that they had to go through. The fact that they, they kept their composure, they kept their, their eyes on the vision, and they, they went out and they delivered. Yeah. We had to make um, adjustments throughout the day um, to ensure that we had the performance that we had in the, in the finals. And you, you saw it come out. Yeah. The 4 by 100 I have to ask about that because I thought you had a cracking class one boys, 4 by 100 team, second fastest going into the final. Um, and you didn't finish. How disappointed were you about that? Yeah, we, we were disappointed. Um, but you know what? They, they, when they came off the track, they said, you know, coach, let's get, a, let's get it in the 4x2, in the yeah. right? 
um, anytime an obstacle came up, it, we, we looked at it, brushed it off, and thought about what is next. Yeah. And that's what we, we did. Yeah, and talk to us a little bit about the, the Flying Angels, the track and field, the club, um, and, and what you do and what makes Flying Angels so special. Coach Justice. Um, well, we, we start from age five and up. And we have an after-school program where the kids can come out. We make it a place for them to feel like they belong to. Yeah. And our main goal for the athletes is that by the end of grade 12, they are going out on a scholarship. Yeah. So we have a goal, and that's what we work towards. Yeah, yeah and you've clearly been doing a fantastic job so far. Um, talking about obstacles, by the way, you were disqualified on Saturday at the Gifts of McCook Relays. Um, I think from the class two boys, was it? Um, four by 100, but somehow you got that overturned. Yes, um, they, they were saying that we cut in early. Yeah. Now, um, that I knew that that didn't happen, yeah. but we, we have put things in place that um, if there's a disqualification called or anything, we, we, we have protocols. So I was um, right there ready to deal with, deal with that. And um, they listened to what we had to say, and they reviewed reviewed certain things, and they came up with the right um, the right thing. Yeah. yeah. Two more before we have to go. I'm gonna put you under a little bit of pressure here. I can't <laughs> let you come to the studio and not put you <laughs> under oh, any God. pressure. So, after you won on Saturday, I was seeing on social media where um, some individuals were saying because Flying Angels is a club, that they shouldn't be allowed to compete against high schoolers at Gibson McCook. What say you? I say these are high schoolers. Mm -hmm. High schoolers competing against other high schoolers. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when we, we ran our first race and we failed to qualify for the finals, yeah. no one was talking then. They were saying, welcome, <laughs> Flying Angels, come and have fun. Yeah. And then as we started winning, yeah. then it was, OK, this is unfair. Mm -hmm. Well, these kids are running against their same age groups. They're running against um, the things. So I, I feel it's just. Emotion. People get letting their emotions get the best of them. Yeah. But all in all, it's all in fun. Yeah. Are you coming back for the four by one title next year? We're coming back next year. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming back next year. Flying Angels. It's been a pleasure to have them here in our Sports Max studio. Thank you very much. Yeah. And yeah, let's go to a quick break on the Sports Max zone. So much more for us to discuss on today's show. So stay with us. <laughs>